I love that. It makes me feel very special and an official recording in process. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am excited. Welcome to class. This is healthier ideas, healthier Valentine Day ideas and recipes. So, um, and I was going to put on my cute outfit and be in the cute room and we're just lucky that I got my cute notes put together, so, <laughs> which I'm good with, so that works. Um, so I, <laughs> part of my process is um, that I was just kind of going through um, my brain. I was going through, oh, I was going through ideas and thoughts. And so I was having a hard time deciding, you know, should I put this, this in like under recipe or should I put this under hint? And so what I did was I, I ended up with a, one of my post-it notepads got wet. And so it got really, it's not terribly sticky. And so I thought, oh, I will use that. And so that's what I did. <laughs> I just started writing down all my ideas, which was uh, such a good idea for me because I'm a very visual person. Um, and so I um, I was just able to write down everything and then kind of go through and sort them. And so hopefully everything will work. But like the pictures, because I'm using Google Photos, I've got my laptop going. Oh, my laptop, I need to set my laptop on. Do I, yes, yes, I do need to say my laptop. <laughs> All right, pause, please. <laughs> oh, I love it. Let's start again. All right, got it. Recording in progress. Okay, so um, I have, oh, let me move this. Okay, so I have come up with a bunch of, of different ideas. So I was, as I was jotting things down, I was, um, I sorted them basically into two different two different categories. One is like FYI, good information, things to think about, things to try. And other things are more like actual recipes, um, actual things to do, that sort of thing. So, and I also, oh, I should open up that one too. Um, I also, let's see, here we go. Oh, I know, I put it there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll do this one. <laughs> uh, yay. Okay, I'm just trying to, I've got my, some of my notes written just so it, on my history. So just in case I have them. Okay, all right. Okay, so, all right, there we go. And we are already writing. Okay, so um, I started I started writing on these and then I turned them over and stuck my little stickies on them. So um, one of the things that first came to me is planning. And I, I really, I love planning parties and having parties. In fact, that's what, um, I'm going to, I want to, um, have my computer, uh, let's see, there we go, you want to make co-host, yes, alrighty, because I want to share my screen with you so you can see what I'm talking about, alrighty, share screen. Okay. No, we that. Don't worry about that. All right. So I'm sharing my screen. So it says, okay, you are screen sharing. There we go. All righty. So the reason I wanted to do that is because I've got um, a bunch of pictures and they are not exactly in the order that I, they have them in the order of the date taken, not the order I want them in. <laughs> so we're going to kind of go back and forth with with um, with pictures. All right. So um, 
I love, I love having fancy parties. And so as my nieces were, were little, we would do um, Valentine's Day's party. And this is my friend Maria and she loves dressing up. And so the first year she dressed up as Cinderella and the next year she was uh, Sleeping Beauty. And then the next time she was Snow White. And so one of the things that we do is um, we have everybody dresses up. And so like, um, like one year, like this one was just fancy dress with hats. Um, and then like the year, a year or two later, we did like a princess one. Um, and so we just, we have lots of fun. And so I just, I have my notebook, which is kind of, uh, I have one per year and I'm, this is last year's. And so I just need to grab the other ones because it's right behind me. Um, and so I like to just keep all my thoughts and because it's bound, I don't lose them, <laughs> which is a good thing for me. So, oh, and I have other notes here. All right, there we go. Um, so, okay, recipes, fruits, tools. Okay, um, and so I like to, okay, there we go, Mark's here. Um, so I like to um, have everything pre-planned and it, it stems back to the time that I was very perfectionistic. And I am a ref, I'm a recovering perfectionistic, perfectionist, perfectionist. <laughs> Clearly I'm not that so much anymore. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I think that life kind of teaches you to do that, but I still, you know, um, I, you know, love designing things and stuff. And so I wanted, I always wanted it to be perfect. And so, you know, I would do dinners and stuff like when I was in junior high and high school for my parents' anniversary and things like that and um, decorated cakes. And, and so, but one of the things that I've found is over time is kind of sharing, sharing the wealth in the responsibility as well as the activities. And that takes off some of the pressure that you might feel. So, and one of the things I have here, I'll go through my notes. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna read these to you because you'll um, you'll recognize me. Okay, oh, you know what? I'm actually, I changed my mind, surprise. We're gonna, I'm gonna go through and just kind of show you the pictures first. So part of our Valentine's party is that it's important, it was important for us to have the girls do things that were meaningful. And so they are making Valentine's Day cards. And then we went over to a, a care center and they did heart attacks on the care center's door. Let's see. Okay, yeah, here they, they did on the, like on the care center's door. And then they went in and one year, um, because we um, Maria always brings the blue Danube, I think, whatever the waltz is that, da, 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 whatever waltz that is, she brings that. And so we all learned how to waltz every year. And so those will be going over later. Anyway, so one of the things is that they make cards for the, the people in the care center. And then the other thing, this is us learning how to dance the waltz. All right, and here's our, our portrait. This is our princess picture. Um, so, and one of the things is, so uh, the first time we did this, I wanted it to be just really special and fancy because it was the first time. And so this is my cute nephew. So he and his mom were our servers. And so he was just so cute. Anyway, I just had to show that to you. There he is. Oh, he's so cute. His name is Seth. Oh, you can see that here. Let me move this thing. Wait, no, come back. This thing. Is that? Ah! You know what? I'm going to move it at the bottom. I didn't know that it showed up. I thought that it didn't show up because it doesn't show up a lot of times. All right. Well, now we know. Actually, I am going to put it back up here. <laughs> All righty. Um, and then here he is serving, and this is, we've got all sorts of fun, fancy food. Now, these we were doing, we had little, we took, um, make um, sandwiches and cut out little sandwiches with the little um, uh, cookie cutters, and just everything was a little dainty and, and everything. So this one is just one of my kind of normal, we're not trying to be super healthy 
um, ones. This is more just for fun, but I wanted to sh share it with you because my first thing is that when we're talking <laughs> about um, about recipes and stuff. Um, I, I was actually asked to do this to, um, cause I have a friend who said, okay, so I want to have recipes that taste good and that are, have treats, but that are healthier. And so one of the things I wrote is this is not your lifestyle diet. It is a holiday, chill out. <laughs> so a lot of these are aimed at me, right? Um, this is another one, warn Amazon you're coming. <laughs> I was looking at different, uh, 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 cupcake tins and molds and stuff. Okay. Um, another thing is make sure you try your recipes ahead of time, not just for the party, because you will be surprised at how many things can go special that are not what you want. <laughs> um, the setting, like, you know, be thinking about like how you want, do you want this to be more formal? Do you want it you know, kind of be thinking ahead of time how you want it to be. Are you going to need help? Is it going to be more buffet style? Is it like just for you and your spouse or your grandkids? Or are you having a, a larger party? So just kind of things to be thinking about because if you're going to have, you know, 20 people here, you don't need to, you probably don't need to have like um, a, I got distracted. Uh, you probably don't need to have like you know, five different very specialized hors d'oeuvres for everybody. Um, but like here, it's the grandkids and me and grandma and Maria. And so, yeah, so we did. All right. Um, and make sure that you have all the equipment ordered ahead of time, washed and gathered together. Um, and so like one of the things that I like to do is I like to put all the bowls together and the measuring spoons and the cups and everything and the ingredients and just kind of put them in a little pile. Now, like with measuring spoons, you don't need to have, you know, one teaspoon per everything that you're going to make. And a lot of these things, hopefully you can make them a little bit early. Um, and so anyways, yes. And then this is another thing. This is, this is more like notes to myself in the past because I'm much better at this. Remember, you're supposed to be having fun. <laughs> now, this is a great time to talk about some oils. So balance oil is really a great thing. Serenity oil, really great. I um, like to diffuse them, but I also like to put them on the back of my neck when I'm, when I'm cooking and making things so that I can stay calm and balanced. So, all right. Let me see. Oh, there I am. Tea party. Maria, how cute. Okay. I I look a little tired, but that's okay. Um, and so then this is the next year when she's sleeping beauty. Uh, this is um one of the things that I, I love to do is to have the grandkids over and make different, you know, teach them how to do different types of of baking and some of them are healthy and some of them are less than healthy. So this we were making cupcakes. I was I was in my cupcake phase and cake decorating phase. And so we were making cupcakes and they were um, decorating their own cupcakes. So let's see. So here they are. They're all getting ready to work. These are some of the cupcakes. Um, macarons. So we, uh, we made these. These are really um, good if you have someone who is not gluten tolerant because you use tapioca flour, I think. Nope, almond flour, it's almond flour. Tapioca flour is the rolls. Oh, that I forgot to get the recipe for. Ah, Brazilian rolls. I think I might've written it down somewhere. I'm gonna put it on my note. All right, Brazilian cheese balls. And then that way, I will remember it, hopefully. All right, on the computer. Um, and so the other thing with these is that you can, um, the, with the, the, you can usually use like a ganache if you're wanting to um, do a chocolate. It, or, or like or like with white. But one of the things that um, is fun is you can get um, freeze dried raspberries and you just put them in your like your bullet or your 
um, blend tech, but a, a high power blender, and you're just gonna just blend it and get it so it's all um, blended. <laughs> I, I, the, I was just thinking, well, I guess you could also do like a food processor, but, and then my, my suggestion would be to not take the lid off right away, <laughs> to let it settle. Because otherwise you're going to have a raspberry cloud and you're going to lose part of what you just made. But it makes really flavorful, yummy um, filling. And so like you can do, take a butter honey. So like if you're, if you're, um, you know, avoiding sugar, um, you can take a butter honey and add some of the um, raspberry powder to your butter honey. And it is really good. Um, another thing is um, oh, another thing I wanted to mention that I've got somewhere is um, things to do ahead of time. Do I have it here? No, it must be on this one. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So um, another thing is depending on the type of sugar you're going to be using. Um, this class is going to be for people, I, I'm hoping that you can take a recipe and whether you're, you know, like very no sugar whatsoever, or you're like, I like natural sugar or these, or you're like, yeah, like it has fruit in it. It's healthy. Wherever your range is, <laughs> I want you to enjoy it and have a lovely uh, Valentine's Day. So Hopefully, uh, I feel like my job is to, I feel like I'm kind of like a traffic director. And so I'm like, or, or maybe an airline airline pilot, right? All right, we're gonna go this way. <laughs> so I'm gonna direct you on places that you can get information because there's so much information and it's very easy to, to look it up. It can be overwhelming. And so sometimes I find that if you set up a time in a class or something or uh, a dinner, then that gives you a deadline. And some people are like super like, okay, we're just gonna start now. Do, 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 do. I've got sister-in-laws that are like that and I love and admire that. And that's not what I'm like. And so for me, it's better if I like have, okay, here's the date, but you can't be too far away because then I'll forget it. It's so <laughs> it's that magic time. And uh, so I, you know, figure out that and then kind of back, back date. And so typically what happens is I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that was my alarm to say I've got one hour left. Ah, so, oh, well. All right, so the, um, okay, so the other, okay, mm, nope, so sorry. So I'm just making sure, uh, okay. Um, so one of the things is to be thinking um, on like what you want to create. Is this for kids or for this, um, you know, for a party, we talked about that a little bit. Um, and one of the things too is uh, that I've learned that I'm going to share with you is that, um, I just distracted myself with the picture. Um, oh, is is that instead of focusing on on the details of getting everything right, this is part of that perfectionist that we're um, we're we're growing out of. Um, instead of doing that, focusing on the people who are there because these are typically people I love. Typically, I don't have people that I don't love at a party because they're not fun to me. So typically, because I like fun, <laughs> I like parties. So typically they're there. And a lot of times, if not most of the time or all the time, uh, I'm doing this because I want them to feel special and let them know that this is like a way of showing love. So apparently this is one of my demonstrative love languages is here, let me give you yummy things that you'll love. Um, Cause I love them and you love, and then, that, then you know you're loved when I make you things that I love. <laughs> um, and, Anyways, we're going to be talking about some of the different tools that you can use, like ice cube trays and molds and things like that. And one of the things that <laughs> I realized kind of early on 
is that every single it was in fact it was this this uh, party if you look let's see if you can see a plate okay yeah if you if you can see this like right here like everything and and it was supposed to be because this is lady fingers this is our fancy girls party um and and the boys aren't invited the boys were saying though that they wanted to be invited so this next time we do a party we're gonna have everyone um let me see if i can zoom in oh good so like see i've got like everything cut out and and so like these are like tuna sandwiches that we cut out with heart um heart-shaped cookie cutters we have cucumbers and anyway um so there, there's things like that that you can do so but if you can focus on like what you want them to experience and that you're sharing your love with them a lot of times i find that it takes away some of the stress of feeling like um things aren't going exactly the way i want and and honestly teaching this class every week has been a good uh educator that's not quite the word i'm looking for uh, a good trainer for this because the the more i plan and the more uh technology and more spectacular i want it to be the crazier it gets and so what i've learned is you just kind of like do your best forget the rest go with the flow <laughs> my name is mo it's not it just rhymed okay um and oh the another thing is having people help so let me um oh shelly are you waving or do you have a question okay um i think you're i think everyone's muted but um so these are some of my less healthy, but very delicious um, things. Why am I coming down? What was I doing? Okay, well, I'll show you. So these were, okay. So these are um, cucumbers. And then what we did was we took whole wheat bread and put a little bit of cream cheese and then cut out the cucumbers. And then we had the cucumbers on the outside and then a little heart cucumber sandwiches on the inside. And so it's just fun. And so, oh, I remember now. So having the kids get involved. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna show you um, the cocoa bombs. Um, let's see. I downloaded stuff and it's not, okay, that's okay. Um, So one of the things that I have learned to, to do now is um, I like when the kids come, I just have everybody help. And like, we're gonna talk about the, the cocoa bombs. And one of the things that I found that's really nice is that if they, you have them make their own um, and whether it's their own plate or whatever, but like we had like the second year we did it, we had, it was kind of like a, Oh, like the food wars is not food wars, cake wars. It, it, one of the competitions where you design your own plate and platform it and stuff. So we had kind of a fun contest where we did that, and and then they wanted me to judge. I'm like, oh, they're all good, and they're like, ah, that doesn't help. So I think we made Grandma do it. Uh, okay, um, okay, let's see. Oh, the other thing is to ask for help. Um, like, let me, you know what? I'm going to stop the screen share for just a minute so I can chat with you. Oh, wait, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I stopped this one. So many, so many computers, so little brain. That's okay. Okay. Um, and so I was going to be telling you something that was terribly interesting. Oh. Uh, one of the things that I have found is um, people are so willing to help, but they don't know what to do. They don't know how to help. Oh, and I remembered something else to, to tell you about brainstorming. Uh, but anyways, is if you get the, the you know, we talked about getting your ingredients together. 
if you um, get your um, ingredients, like if you're gonna be using like ice cube tray, like special ice cube trays or molds or whatever, um, and then you can give it to a, who's ever coming and then they can, you can have them make it so that you don't have, so that you're not trying to do everything. Um, because I've tried that and you can do it. It's just kind of frustrating, especially if you don't have a lot of fridge or freezer space or, um, you know, if, if your stress level is, is under stress. So, um, but people are usually really good um, about doing that, especially if you, if you just explain like, yeah, you know, here's some, here are the ice cube trays. You're just gonna put like a, a raspberry in each tray and a mint leaf in each tray and then just fill it up with sparkling apple, apple cider and freeze it. And that's like, that is a great thing to put in like if you're serving um, fruit juice, that's really a fun way to, to have ice cubes. And that's something else that you can have someone else do that you're not having to take care of slash worry about. Okay. Um, one of the things, oh, here's my thing about brainstorming. It's on, the, it's on this side of the page. Um, so what are the things that I am finding that I think my brain is changing, which I know it is, but um, I'm finding that if I do some brainstorming ahead of time, that that helps. And a lot of times what I find is when I'm planning these things like weeks in advance, like, I mean, I, I planned a, a haunted house that like covered our entire backyard. We have this huge awning and like we had it and I had fog machines. So like, I've, I've always been a good party planner. <laughs> um, and so part of it is learning how to kind of taper it down to a more manageable level. Um, and part of it is thinking outside the box. So if you give yourself plenty of time and just kind of open yourself up, open your brain up um, is, and just write down everything, even like if it's completely impractical or like a stupid idea, because a lot of times what I find is I'm like, well, that's never gonna happen, but you're like, oh, but I could switch this and I could try this. So several of the things that I'm gonna be talking about are um, things based off of some, something else that I haven't actually tried yet. Um, and then a lot of them are recipes that I've tried. And then um, I will, um, I can send you the recipes um, if you need written, if you, you know, some of these ice cube cherries, you know, mint leaf, you can probably figure that one out. You don't need a recipe for it, but you might. Anyway, um, oh, another thing is that um, we, um, what, we, what? Let's see, new tab. Sorry, I'm going to. I was going to try to multitask, but clearly that's not super effective. All right, but I did want to show you this. So um, that's not it. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um so we um for for Christmas, uh, my brother came down from um, Oregon and his family, and we um, we did. I I wanted to make cocoa bombs, and so you probably are have seen like the ones that are around. And like I've done I've done bath bombs before. I know. In fact, next week I'm thinking about doing a Valentine's self care DIY type of ideas. Um, also, I'm very open if you guys have ideas that you are interested in that you want more information on or anything like that. I appreciate that because then I know what direction to go. Otherwise, you get to go whatever direction my brain goes and it's a fun ride. Um, anyway, I had, so we're making cocoa bombs, but I saw this really cute idea of um, this gal. It was, it was in Spanish, so, but there were subtitles. And what she did was she had like a little plastic, um, clear plastic cup and she put the, uh, filled the, like the, with um, 
chocolate around the, the outside. And so she made basically like a, a mold. Um, and then she um, made lids for it and then she had straws. And so they were like these little cups, the cocoa bombs that you um, could put in your, um, sorry. Uh, you can put in your your cocoa, and, and so. Um, but my um, my one niece is um, lactose uh, not friendly. Well, if lactose isn't friendly to her. Let's see. Ah, here we go. I just had to go back. Like I said, I'm having I'm having a little bit of issues with the um, dates. All right, come on. Open. There we go. Share my screen. Okay. Okay, so these are like all the different things that um, we had. So I had this little um, table that they could go and they could make their own. Um, this is like for the inside. So they'd come over to the kitchen table and they had their plastic cup and they would put uh, chocolate on the outside uh, or on the outside, on the inside, and then we we stuck it outside and let it uh, cool down for like ten minutes. Um, and then this stuff was all the stuff for the inside. Um, and I had I have a niece who um, is eats really healthy and it is not uh, doesn't have lactose. So what I found is oh no I want to show you. Let's see I know what I can do. Maybe. I'll just have to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> uh, is I found this is coconut milk powder. I was so excited. And um, so anyways, we um, did a hot chocolate bomb for her with just dark chocolate on the inside. And then we use this. And then because you're using chocolate, it's very rich. So you don't even have to use the cocoa powder. You can. Um, and so, but what we did was um, I also ended up getting some different um, type of chocolate chips, like a like dark chocolate that was like 60% cacao and semi-sweet and milk chocolate. And I think I might've had white, but just so that, you know, the, the kids could kind of decide what they want, different types of marshmallows and stuff like that, which isn't necessarily for this class because it's not terribly healthy, but this is, and also I saw on a video on YouTube, so reliable source. Uh, no, but they they had um, coconut coconut cream that they had like whipped coconut cream, and so I was gonna look that up and and um, find that recipe, but I did not. I ran out of time before I ran out of things to do. So, if you are interested, you can look that up. All right. Oh, and so that's my last note is is to find. So like I found this at Harmons, which is. Um, it's, it's a regular grocery store, but it's a little bit higher end. So I'm sure Trader Joe's would have um, things like this or like uh, Sprouts or a, a health food store. That's where you're gonna find um, kind of healthy alternatives. And pretty much you can find um, healthy alternatives for you know whatever, whatever it is that you're avoiding or you're wanting to have more of. Um, and so, that's just a resource um, for you. Okay, let me see. Tools. All right, we're going to tools. I got distracted with the picture. <laughs> sure, okay. I can do this. All right, okay, good. So, let's see. Is this, okay, nope. Wrong way. Let's see. Let's go back. Uh, oh, I know. Over here. There we go. Um, okay, so this is, oh, these are um, strawberries that, um, that you can, that you cut and they're roses. And so one of the things when you're doing, um, you're wanting to look for roses that come to a point, not the ones that are kind of honking that are, are square at the end. Um, and 
you're looking for ones that are really red. And what you do is you just start at the edge and you just um, do um, a sharp cut. And then you're just gonna cut every other angle like this as you go around. And then what you're gonna do is see here where it's kind of like that. You take your finger and you just um, run it along each of the edges to help it kind of curl out. Uh, one of the things to do is um, make sure that you clean your strawberries beforehand. And so um, one of the things that I do is you rinse them off and then you put in some, uh, a couple drops of lemon oil into the water and just agitate it and just rinse it off and do that a couple of times. So that way um, it kills anything that you don't want on there and, and it, um, Make sure that you're you know, not eating dirt, whatever. Uh, oh, no, wrong paper. R right paper, wrong size. All right. Um, another thing is to, when you're thinking of like menu, is, um, is taking um, a favorite, like a family favorite or a comfort food and figuring out um, how to um, change it so that it's healthier. So, you know, they, they have um, lots of like brownie variations, right? So they have keto brownies, they've got black bean brownies, they've got, you know, whatever your, whatever your um, eating preference is, you can find it fairly easily on Google and um, on, on YouTube. So one of the things that um, we did is, oh, let me move this. Let's see, there we go, is, uh, okay. So these are um, rose apple tarts and let's see. No, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that. All right, okay. Okay, so these are, these are called apple roses and um, these are, they look really fun. And depending on the, the size that you, um, the size of rose or rosette that you want, um, it would depend on, you can make it much bigger, you can make it smaller, like bigger by adding more roses. What they've done is this is like one sheet of pastry puff, um, that they are cutting into six. And then you've got your apples. One of the things that they said is when you're doing this, you want a darker red skin, like, or brighter red skin, because um, when you bake it, it dulls the color. And so in order to, you know, keep the color, um, that is oh, one of the things they suggest. So lemon, this is um, apricot preserves. And you could use anything like that. You could also use, let's say that um, they do have, okay, let me talk stevia. Stevia is something like, I'll, I'll show you in the um, Essential Life book. They've got some really fun recipes. And stevia is one of the things that they recommend you use for sweetener. So that works for really a lot of people. For some of us, stevia has got a definite aftertaste that. I just don't handle well. It just is like, <laughs> anyway, because, you know, I'm so subtle. And um, so, and I, I was talking with Sheila one time and she's like, well, the problem is you just, you just need to have a stevia that's processed well. So she had some stevia growing out in her garden. So she's like, go pick, you know, just like you would a mint leaf, go pick a leaf and taste it. And you're going to see that it's, it's totally different and it's going to be good. And I went out and yeah, it tasted just the same in the fresh leaf form as it does in the dry form. So that is not something that I care to use, which makes it a little bit tricky because a lot of like um, green drinks and other sorts of powdered drinks are sweetened with stevia. So my hack is what I have found, which is makes it interesting, but that's okay, I'm okay with it is um, I actually um, will drink my green, my green drink 
um, like a tea. And I just said, I put honey in it and, and, um, and then just drink it, drink it hot. Um, the other thing you can do is, is mix the honey with some water ahead of time. Um, and I, I prefer, I prefer honey. I've got um, some, I've got in, in upstairs in the bathroom, I've got like a whole little tea thing. So I've got like my tea, my, you know, plug in kettle and like my different herbal teas and I've got my honey and everything is in this Tupperware bucket and anyways. Um, and that's where I also have like my green, my my uh, powdered green or red drink, that sort of thing. Um, so that's something just to be aware of. Um, I know that there's xylitol is um, one that um, is low, um, it's, I, I think it's low G, uh, glycemic index, but if you have too much of it, it makes your tummy want to go way faster than you want it to. Um, also, so anyways, there's just, there's lots of different things that you can um, try. Um, also maple syrup and raw coconut sugar is one that, that you can use. And that's one of the things that, um, wow, time goes when things go. Um, so one of the things that I would suggest doing is if you're going to be doing a lot of baking and you are using raw coconut sugar rather than white sugar, um, because it's uh, larger granules, depending on how you're using it, um, you may you may or may not want to do this. But like like we did with the raspberry, um, you may want to put it either in the food processor or the bullet, and just um, put it through and let it, it spin to break, break it up. So it makes it, um, so it makes it more fine. So you get a finer grain. Uh, you can continue to do that and make it like, so if you want powdered sugar, like if you're making, you know, something for like a glaze or a, um, an icing, then you can, you can do that and keep, keep going until it becomes powderized. For powdered sugar, for powdered raw coconut sugar that you're making on your own, uh, that you do need to have a high, a high tech blender. And they did suggest that if you are doing a lot of, of blending um, of like dry things, that you may want to have a dry container and a wet container. <laughs> because if you um, have a little bit of water in there, that's going to cause a little problem. Um, and the other thing that, that they don't have here, back, going back to the recipe, um, is I will um, also, well, stop, but um, I want to share a couple of like essential oils that I would add to this, that you could add, add to this. So um, anyway, so they're doing the Red Delicious, but there's like, I think the pink lady is, um, I was looking at this pretty red. So anyways, you just cut it in half, you core it, and now the thing is you want to slice it thinly. You're going to start at the bottom and um, and just cut it very thinly. And um, so she, what she does, I thought this was a cool idea, is use your fingers for the um, uh, sieve um, so you don't get the seeds. So at this point, with when you add the sliced apples and the water, what I would do is I would also add my oils. So let me see which oils. Um, I was thinking that um, yeah, there's there's cassia slash cinnamon oil, but also um, I would do I would do like um, a cardamom, and we've got the new vanilla. So I would do a drop of vanilla, a drop of cardamom, and then depending on how much water and to your taste, um, the cinnamon or cassia. Uh, those get spicy and so typically because you're we're putting it in water and we're going to be actually dumping out the water you're probably okay with doing a um a drop of cinnamon and but but go ahead and try it and like one thing you could do to try it is just to soak some you know cut up some apples and try soaking them with the different oils and see what you like best and you know because there are some that are just like ooh, this is really good and like hmm Yes, yeah, so you can this really like with on guard apples. I, I love those, but you have to like let people know ahead of time because otherwise sometimes they're like, mm, it tastes very eucalyptus-y. 
but your apples don't normally taste. And so uh, it's very healthy for you, but um, so there's that. Uh, also, if I'm using on guard with um, oils, a lot of times I will use um, a, another oil in conjunction with it. So like I'll use the cardamom or like wild orange, or well, it's got wild orange, or like, you know, tangerine or lemon or lime or something um, just to kind of, yeah, give it a balance. All right, so um, she's also, she has you microwave this for three minutes. Um, uh, I know that some people do not have a microwave or do not microwave things, and that is fun. You can just put this on a stove, oh dear, um, and, and bring it to a, um, you're gonna, you're gonna like simmer them like you would, oh, what do you call it? When you when you're canning tomatoes and you or peaches, and you like cook them for just a little bit so that the skins come off, it's kind of like that. You're going to cook it about that that long, maybe you know, so maybe about three minutes, depending on. But you don't want this like a full boil. Um, also with the the um, things, okay, now you're just going to pour out and um, during that. But with with the the oils. Um, if you're wanting to add them, this would also be a good place to add them if you want it stronger. Like let's say the apples are very mild, or let's say that you add, you could add the, the vanilla to the um, apricot uh, preserves and do the cardamom and cinnamon in the apples. It's just kind of what you want. I personally kind of like playing around and figure things out and trying new things. Other people, even the like ones of her like are like, no, I want a recipe exactly. What do I do and when do I do it? And do, so I can get you recipes like that. <laughs> I tend to not think like that. So I don't th think of it. So I feel free to remind me like, hey, you're gonna give you a recipe. Thank you. Okay, so now you're just gonna put that as slices with the curve up. And this is this is the um, pastry, the puff pastry. And then she's sprinkling cinnamon, which you definitely can do. Um, Cause you can use, what if it's, oh, I remember something I was gonna tell you. One of the things is that you will find that as you use the oils in cooking, the oils do not taste exactly the same as the, whatever it is you're using. And, and part of that is because it depends on the part of the plant that they're using. So for instance, if you taste wild orange oil, it does not taste like orange juice. And part of that is because the, the essential oil is just chemistry, right? There's no vitamins or minerals, there's no calories. It's just, it's just um, chemistry that's going to work with your body and get absorbed. So tells your brain, you know, here's, here's something to help protect, blah, blah, blah. Not blah, 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 sorry. Um, anyway. So one of the things that I like to do is, um, and, and so with a wild orange, um, it, it, the oil is cold pressed from the rind. Typically when you eat an orange, you're eating the inside, <laughs> which is sweeter and juicier, but it doesn't have the essential oil. And so um, I find that if, if the um, oil flavor is a little bit bitter, especially like for kids, um, is you want to take a, a um, toothpick and um, pour a drop. When I do uh, oils and recipe, I always pour it into a spoon before I pour it into whatever I'm cooking because typically you can kind of see how much um, will come out. But I've been like, I've done like, you know, massages before where I, I went to dr drop, you know, one drop of lavender and five came out. Well, if, if that's your recipe, you have to <laughs> either start over or, you know, triple, quadruple the batch. Um, and so if you do it in the spoon, then you can also dip more. So let's say that you you dip it in your Q-tip and your Q-tip <laughs> and then your toothpick. Uh, do, not stiff, uh, do not stick a Q-tip in your food. Just heads up. That's what I would do. You can do what you want. You do you. But um, so Okay, so toothpicks. So yeah, so um, like, especially like if you're just doing your own cup of, of, you know, if everyone's doing their own cup of tea, then you can put a drop in the spoon and then you can double dip your toothpick back into the spoon without contaminating the whole, um, 
the whole bottle or needing to get another uh, toothpick. Oh my goodness, Q-tip just wants to come out. Okay, so the other thing you could do is that they do have recipes for the puff pastry, um, which is what, you know, if you're, if you're really wanting to, um, if you're really focused on a healthy, you could do a whole wheat um, um, puff pastry, like make, you know, find your own recipe, or I can, you know, I, I can find a recipe. Um, and one of the things too is when you're, when you're doing baking, sometimes the wheat flour, well, the whole wheat flour is drier and depending on the flour, they've got like white, white wheat, which is much closer to like white flour. Um, and so sometimes if you um, do like half and half, so, you know, half white flour, half whole wheat flour, that sometimes will give it the smoothness, if, especially if you're doing um, baking and you're wanting um, something. I mean, if you're wanting bread, then whole wheat bread is fantastic. But, um, you know, you may not want to have that. It might show up more in different recipes. But there's also other recipes. So like, you know, whole wheat flour in brownies is going to be much less noticeable than say, um, you know, whole wheat flour in white cake. So, all right, back to the, the video. So you roll it up um, and then look how cute. And then you put it in a muffin tin. Um, and so she's got the um, silicone. Uh, when you're using the silicone, you do want to make sure that you have a pan underneath because it will um, bend. So, and then, um, yeah, you say you take them out and sprinkle some powdered sugar. Um, anyway, okay, so pause. Okay, no, I didn't want to do that. All right. Oh, so this was another idea that I had. That this isn't exactly it. So one of the things that I was thinking about that would be really fun would be um, pomegranate seeds in um, in jigglers and Jello. And um, but I was thinking, well, you know, you don't want just Jello because we're being healthy. And so I thought, you know, it'd be fun. Um, my my parents have actually started doing this. So you know what, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen is. So um, for to help with their nails and and things like that, um, they take gelatin every day. And so my dad said, they also drink orange juice and that they, well, they mix it in their orange juice and drink it. My dad was saying, you know, it'd be really nice if if we had, you know, orange juice pudding or jello. And so that's what they did. This is, this is so cool. So it's, on my note, it is right here. Okay, so it, they you, they use the Knox um, gelatin package. So you do one package to two cups of fluid, which it turns out to be about a tablespoon, and then um, you take um, a tablespoon, they, 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 uh, the recipe calls for two tablespoons, but they do one tablespoon of sugar mixed with the gelatin. And that's help, that's to help break the gelatin up. Um, but you, but, so like this would be a place where if you're wanting um, the healthier, you could do the raw coconut sugar. Um, and so what I thought would be really fun is you take pomegranate seeds and then you're going to mix the gelatin in with some Perrier. So it's a little bit, it's sparkly and you let it set up a little bit. Um, if, you, if you put the fruit in and just pour it, then the fruit will float up to the top. Um, and so um, one of the things that you wanna do is if you're wanting it, the fruit to be a little bit more suspended is to let the jello harden up a little bit and harden up, firm up a little bit before you pour it into the molds or whatever. Um, so anyways, my, my parents have this, this um, it's orange juice jello. Mm, it's delicious. Um, so what, what they do is they take two cups of fluid, so two cups of orange juice, then you take a half cup of that two cups and you're going to bring it to a boil. You're gonna boil it and add the, the gelatin and sugar to that until it completely dissolves. And then you add that to the rest of your fluid, mix that up. So we're doing orange juice or whatever, the, the sparkling Perrier. 
and then pour it into the containers. Um, uh, um, we're running a little bit late, but that's okay. Uh, I, I really do try to keep this to an hour. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's what that note says is for floating fruit. So anyways, um, my thought is to just take an ice cube tray and you can use that for molds um, and take that and then put the pomegranate seeds in that and let the sparkling jello kind of set up a little bit and then pour that in. And then you'll have these, these uh, really cool sparkling like bubbly um, jello with pomegranate seeds. How yummy. Oh, and the other thing that I was thinking too is if you wanted to add like a little bit of um, like maybe a drop of lime, to, uh, lime oil to the um, pomegranate seeds and kind of mix them up, get them coated. That would be fun. It'd be a fun flavor to add. Okay. Um, one of the things is when you're when you're um, making you're you're looking at making recipes healthy. A lot of times you can cut the sugar down. Um, sometimes in half. You know, sometimes it's replacing it with something else. Um, you know, I I know that there's uh, you know if you're wanting to cut down on fat, you can add like applesauce to a baked um, a baked good. Um, you know, like you know, brownies or whatever, um, to, instead of adding oil and it, it helps it set up, but it's fat free. Uh, let's see. Oh, another thing is that, um, you can cut veggies into lots of really, um, fun, fun ideas with, um, cookie cutters. Um, another thing is to take, Take, oh, take a knife and just go around a cookie cutter. So like, let's say that you're you're wanting to cut something like we're gonna talk about uh, like chicken, you could like, or, you know, whatever, you could actually take your cookie cutter and then take your, your sharp knife and cut around it so that you have the shape that you want. Oh, and that was one of my thoughts. One of my last thoughts was that, um, I know like, it, like when I first used to do it, I would, like had everything had to have some sort of specialty. Like it had to either be on a mold or it had, and, and as, I've, as I've grown and matured, uh, I found that you just need a few things that um, it will help it feel special, but you'll, um, it'll be a little bit easier on you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just go through these photos because I found them for you. I care. Okay, so oh, we show these. Those are the the cucumber sandwiches. All right. Oh, so this is um the what you're gonna what you would do. So this is um celery, onion, and spinach that's just stir fried, and you could do any any sort of um greens that that you want to do like I was thinking you could do like a beans or asparagus and what you want to do is put that on the plate and then you're going to cook this after you, you cook the, the first thing so the other thing is this this is a chicken breast how cool is this um so let me see oh you know what we can read the how to do it so um, she said, you cut the chicken breast horizontally from top to bottom rather than across without cutting all the way through. You wanna be able to fan the chicken open like a book, keeping the tender underneath. Tip, the breast is more likely to split in two if you remove the tender. Um, cut a small notch in the middle of the thick end, just enough to make the heart shape. Uh, you should not have to do much shaping. Um, I removed just a little from the top of each side, uh, right in the center. Some chicken breasts naturally cooperate a little more than others. If you're using a rub, sprinkle it over both sides of the breast. If you're using a chicken that you have marinated, remove it from the marinade and allow the access to drip off. Um, and then you heat an oiled skillet over medium to medium high heat. And when it's hot, you place the chicken breast tender side facing up and cook for about three minutes, then flip and cook it for about three to five 
more minutes, depending on the size of the breast, or until the chicken is um, cooked through the center. Look for an internal temperature of 160 degrees as the temperature will continue to rise once removed from the heat. If you're using barbecue sauce, baste both sides of the cooked chicken with the sauce and flip a few times in the hot skillet to caramelize in the final minutes of cooking. <laughs> Serve with love to smiling faces. That's cute. All right. So my thought is what you do is you, you cook your greens and then you put your chicken heart on top and then there's more, but wait, there's more. If you, if you click now, no. All right, so this, this mold is, you can use for candy, but you can also use it for butter. And so this is also good if you're just wanting like a little simple thing to make things elegant. Um, you, you don't wanna melt the butter. You just wanna soften the butter. And then you're just going to put it in these, in these molds. We'll just scrape it and then, um, you know, put it in, scrape it along the top. Um, and then I would, whenever, whenever I use silicone, you want to have a, a, a pan or something underneath it. Um, I like a cookie tray so that you can move it around without worrying about it folding in half and spilling because I've had experience with that. So the sad experience is to keep talking and saying, put a pan underneath. <laughs> Um, and then just put it in your um, fridge or um, what I would do is put it in the fridge and then right before you serve it, you may wanna put it in the freezer for just a minute and then turn it over and pop them out. They'll pop out a little bit better. And because it's butter, they'll, they'll come out very easily. And with the silicone, the heat of your hand will just warm them up enough to come out. So, and then you have these cute little, these are, these are candies, but you'll have these cute little um, pads of butter. And so you could put like this little um, butter heart I mean, flour. You could use it if you're like, you know, up for your rolls or whatever. But also um, if you're having like cooked vegetables, you could like put the cooked vegetables and then put the little flour of butter when serving. So I just was very excited about that. Um, okay, so the there's just a couple of things for tools. Um, a heart-shaped muffin pan. You can use this for lots of things. Um, and they've got the, the silicone and they've also got some that, so this, these are like mini hearts, but then you have ones that are bigger so that they're more like normal size. And so you can do your baked goods, but like you can do like a cinnamon roll. Um, we do like a really good um, whole wheat cinnamon roll with uh, honey butter um, frosting. And you can do that in the heart shape. Also, if you're doing a meat thing, you can do like, a, if you're doing a meatloaf type or some sort of cooked loaf like that, you could also do that as a heart. Um, and so that's fun because then you have your vegetables that you can serve. And so it just, it, it just makes it fun. Alrighty. Um, okay, so with the cookie cutters, there's lots of different ones. And one of the things that um, you may not know about is, let's see, nope, let's see, where'd it go? Mm. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that you can do is with this, it's like a, a daisy or, you know, a, a flower um, cookie cutter <laughs> is, you can, um, and you can also do this for fondant, but you can um, take this and roll, roll out the, your, your dough. And then um, you're going to uh, cut out multiple sizes. And then you're gonna cut these where the petals are. You're just gonna cut a little bit deeper with the tip of a paring knife. And then um, what you do is you start with a, the smallest one and, yeah, you start with the smallest one and you're gonna do one cut like from the center down to the end and you're gonna roll it and you're gonna be making, um, you can make a rose, but it's made out of bread dough or cookie dough or puff pastry dough, whatever. And then you take the next one and then you're just gonna kind of gather that up around and then gather the other side. And then they have um, like little glass 
bowls. You'll see them when they're in the cooking shows that they have all of their little pre-measured ingredients. You can put it in one of those or they have silicone ones so that you, they're in a bowl and then you let them raise and then they cook. And that keeps them so that you've got the, the flower shape. Um, but that's just a fun thing that you can do if you've got this um, multiple size uh, cookie cutter. Uh, oh, this one, this one's really cool. I, I've been going through the web for you folks. So this is an ice cube um, mold. So this is like a big ice cube. So this would be like, if you've got a bigger glass and you're gonna pour, I don't know, some drink. <laughs> um, but they have, they, they have this. And this is the one that I was thinking too, that would be fun to do the pomegranates um, with, um, with like a fruit juice. Um, you could also do like a, let me see, what was I gonna, with the mold. Um, oh yeah, just that you could do, um, you know, cut out the little, with the little tiny uh, cookie cutters, you can cut out um, like cantaloupe or watermelon. Um, there's that picture that I, I had on the invitation that had the watermelon with cut out cookie cutters with a heart and blueberries in there. You can do some really fun things like that. And so, um, but you can cut out like the little hearts and then put, let those be floating in the, um, in your mold and then pour in the, um, the gelatin mixture. And then you'll have like little hearts in your rows or anyways, you know, um, basically you can, whatever it is that you like think of, you can find out how to do it. Um, these are really cool. I was, um, they're like right now, a lot of um, people are doing the royal icing um, with the different cookies for realistic looking cookies. And the, one of the things with the royal icing on the sugar cookies is that um, it, it hardens, but it doesn't, it doesn't dry out and it, um, it, you know, you don't have to worry about it getting smushed, but it's also just a thin layer. But there are some really fun things you can do. Like you can, and these are not in the healthy category, so we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail. But um, like you could do these, you know, these cutout cookies. And then what you do is you take, you just take the white royal icing and you're going to make like, you're just going to go around the very edge. And then you're going to, um, they, they talk about having two different, um, two different, uh, thicknesses. So you've got kind of a runnier one and a thicker one. So you do the thicker one around the edge and then you do the um, one in the middle. And so um, then you can take um, just like food coloring or um, other things and just do the details. So anyway, like they've got these fun different things. All right, let me see. You know, have I held you hostage long enough? Oh, these were fun. These are, um, let's see, here we go. So these are biscotti uh, strawberries. So they're strawberries dipped in white chocolate and then crushed um, biscotti. Um, oh, but first, I'm sorry, they're first they're du um, uh, dunked into cookie butter, which is yummy. Um, and then they dip it in, so they dip that like maybe, so that there's a little bit of the red showing. And then you dip the, the chocolate, whether it's white or dark, um, above that so that it holds it on. And so like this over here, they've taken um, the edible pens, not the, the pens, but the ink is edible and have done roses. I just thought it was really cute. Let's see. So this, this is just one. So these are the, let's see. So these are uh, the um, strawberries. So these are ones that were not like the perfect um, rose cutting shape, or if you see these are not quite as ripe as the others. So, and apparently they're missing um, stems. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember why. So, but what we did was, so we dipped um, the in chocolate, um, 
And so one of the things though that I was thinking, and so that's what we did. So the, it made a little heart with the two strawberries and then this, and then just you are loved. Um, but one of the things that you can do for a healthier um, version is instead of dipping the whole strawberry is doing kind of like a, a plate. So like I would take like um, any, any fruit that you like, but I was thinking like cantaloupe, honeydew melon, uh, watermelon, it really depends on what is available because a lot of the melons, if they're out of season, aren't going to be super tasty, but, you know, um, it, they're typically grown in season in, you know, South America, so it works, but um, you may want to taste it before you go through a whole lot of work um, just to make sure it tastes good, but pineapple is really good um, and strawberries and just make a cute arrangement. So almost do kind of like the edibles. You can also do, um, like I saw they cut out like the little hearts with the cookie cutters with the, they sliced the cantaloupe thin and then did that. And then they did these little kind of mini skewers. And so they had a raspberry and a blueberry and then the little cantaloupe heart and another blueberry. And they just had them as, you know, kebabs that you could take. So what you could do though, if you're wanting to have a healthier option is to take some dark chocolate. And after you have the fruit on the plate is just do a little bit of a drizzle. So then you get the flavor of the chocolate and you get some chocolate, but you're not, it's not completely in chocolate. Just depending on what your level is, you know, and some people um, don't do chocolate and that is, that's fine. Okay, so this is, these are the, um, also, these are silicone molds that you can do, um, you know, like cupcakes, except for they're not cupcakes, but you could do cake batter in, you could do, um, I, I would think that like um, any of the, the jello type things that we've talked about, that would be great. Um, baking in these, they're not, um, if you're like trying to bake bread, they're not going to show the detail nearly as well. And so typically, if you're wanting to do like a fun shape for bread, you want to keep it more simple, like the heart or something like that. And you, what you can do is you can take one of the, so let's say that I am um, going to switch holidays. Oh, and my phone is almost, oh, 5%. Okay, that will end the class because my phone is dying. All right, um, let me, what was, oh, here it is. This is what it's talking about. So like if it was Christmas, one of the things that we could do is you could take, um, apparently it's not going to go in, but like, let's say that you could take the star and you could do, um, like you could do pancakes, you could do eggs. So like, if you wanted to do like a fun breakfast, you could take your heart, um, a cookie cutter and put it on your pan and pour your omelet mixture, your egg mixture, and do heart eggs or star eggs or anything. So, all right. Well, I have talked really fast at you and have told you a lot of things and I tried to help you be, make them healthy. Um, if you have any questions, which you probably do, um, if, just send me a text because then I can, I can answer. Um, but let me see. So let me just say thank you for coming. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording before I hang up. But so anyways, so thank you for coming. Whether you're here live, thank you, thank you. And if you're watching later, thank you again. So you're welcome to. I'm gonna get this posted at some point eventually on YouTube. And I'm looking to find a faster way to to do that. But that's the plan, Stan. All right. So we're going to end the recording, but not that. There it goes.